So um, I, I will like like um, like talk with you about like the story of a question and where it brings us. The introductory note. So fun fact is that if you see like uh, so there is a, this relationship between coffee and programmers. You know that programmers need a lot of coffee, and if you see a cup of coffee or a, yeah a bag of coffee can be like I don't know eight dollars something like that. It depends. And uh, uh, a copy of Windows can be like 100, 30. And, uh, and the issue is that we are like in a between different economies, uh, but they are sharing the same world. So in the digital economy, uh, after produced, the next copy of Windows takes the same uh, minimal effort. With the rural economy, the next batch of coffee take the same effort as the previous one. Uh, so this became apparent for me because of the free software law in early 20s. Uh, we make a software draft of, of free software. We, we say that free software should be used in the state because uh, government should provide like, like accessible and transparent infrastructure for uh, all the stuff that is happening over there. And um, we understand also that, that free is not, doesn't mean, um, like, like we understand that that we that yeah free has these two meanings, but we don't like struggle with that because we use libre for free, uh, in the case of freedoms, not in the case of at no cost like gratis. Um, so we are when, when we're talking like like libre, we're talking about, about rights, and we're talking like gratis, we're talking about market, and we see that flow free libre open source software is uh, an act of solidarity because we are able to access uh, technology. We are able to use old computers without being uh, charged of, of piracy. And we are being able to develop business around technology. We can use that in schools. And we created also the FreeSol that was, is the biggest festival of installation, installation of the of software libre in the world. There are like 20 uh, countries, like, and, like uh, 20 countries and like 200 cities in uh, 18 years. I took part. Sorry, I what? I took part in more than one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still, congratulations. I didn't know you were part of that. Thank yeah, we, we yeah we started that in 2003 in Colombia. And it, it started like, like I don't know, like just doing mail with friends, like, okay, let's create some event where people can like start free software in their machines because yeah, it was early 20, 20s, uh, yeah, early 2000s. And, um, and the issue was that, that it spread around all Latin America, and I think that is the, the biggest event in uh, in uh, in uh, yeah in the world. But yeah, because it's in the global south, it's not visible in the global north and stuff like that. But yeah, we started with friends in just, Colombia. Just so people have an idea, was a meeting to go there, have some coffee, and install free software in one of your machines. It was super nice. Yeah, you can go with your with your laptop and and have a laptop with the same operating system. And a lot of free software in the same operative system or you can have like a dual boot with linux and mac or linux and windows and we start that in uh, in 2003. Uh, so we see that that we have like this uh digital commons that is used globally but is mostly an anglo-european creation so when people use i mean we understand the let's say political implications of using uh, I don't know, ubuntu over windows or firefox over uh, uh, let's say Internet Explorer, uh, but the issue is that despite of, of understanding such implications, we are still uh, using software that is created in other places, and then that, that doesn't account for the needs of for context. Not all the time, at, le at least. So um, uh, I start to have like this critical approach to free software around 2010. So when, when we are talk about, about free software, we talk about these four freedoms that are the freedoms zero. I, yeah, because programmers come from zero. I, I, I think that that's really, I don't know, I don't like it, but anyway. So freedom zero is usage. You can use the software for any purpose. Freedom one is to study uh, and modif uh, modify the software for personal use. Freedom two is to dis the distribution of copies. And uh, freedom three is the distribution of modified copies so if you see freedom one and freedom three uh you require access to the source code of the software to see how this is working um but the issue is that you cannot change what you cannot understand 
So despite of having this big event where we are like, like I don't know, making this, is the third uh, Saturday of April, we're making this uh, festival where we are installing free software in the machines of all the people or all the people that who attend to the festival. And it's a big celebratory event. Despite of that, uh, we are not creating our, our own free software mostly. And that's because because it doesn't, it, it is not enough to have uh, access to the to the sort to the source code. You need to understand uh, the source code to be able to change it. Uh, and because of that, I start to to think about how we can change the digital tools that tools that change us. That was like my my question. I started my PhD on that question. And um, yeah, the idea is that that. Um, so I was doing my PhD on on um, on arts and you know, and humanities, not in, in computer science. My 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 PhD is in design and creation. Uh, you can tell for the quality of the software that I am not a professional programmer. I was like involved with the hacktivist communities. So I was thinking about open culture and open knowledge, the city as a commons, and the plural participation uh, of voices. The core idea was to introduce self-referential digital artifacts in grassroots communities and to explore the consequences. So this is kind of the, I don't know how complex it is, but I think that this is like the, yeah, the core idea. So I would try to explain that uh, with more detail. So the idea is that, that I create an artifact that is using for writing about the artifact. This is a digital artifact, uh, a software. But I can write about like I don't know citizen science, open science, and that modifies the art, the artifact. Or I can write about uh, uh, academic activities or transmedia workshops or other activities. And and I'm writing using this artifact about all these themes. And I can use these themes to modify the artifact, like like to see what are the limitations and possibilities of the artifact as I write in that artifact about all that uh, subjects. So yeah, uh, that that is a let's say a, a, a traditions bridge with several uh, academical um, postures. I, I call it technocultural autopoiesis. Was the the beginning of the idea, but the idea was uh, was inspired in autopoietic systems uh, that are from Maturana and Varela to Chilean biologists. Uh, and try to mix two computer ma mantras. Uh, everything, everything is an object that is the one that we would like. Uh, I mean, in the, in the uh, small tall community, and everything is a file that is the one that, that the one who won. The idea that now we are like using files all the time, installing, installing, uh, having I don't know software in files, sharing files, all that stuff is because in the seventies the, the everything is a file mantra won the imagination, the technical imagination of the people. And also the idea of design as a bridge that is from Wolf and Jonas. So the idea is that we can have like autopoietic systems, the biological, the mental, the social, and the autopoietic systems that are artifacts and design is the stuff that, that bridge those uh, systems. So this was like the, like, like the, let's say theoretical approach for my thesis. And I start to create um, a software that was used to write uh, about other stuff. Uh, that was like the idea. Um, and when we talk about we, how can we change the tool that change us? My my usual usual example is like um, uh, when you put I don't know um, when you put um, hi Sandra, um, nice to have you here. Uh, when you put for example WhatsApp in a relationship, that relationship change uh, changes. It, it, it doesn't matter if it's friends or family or a couple. The issue is that the relationship and the people in them, in the in the relationship is uh, is uh, modified by the technology you put in that relationship, uh, but you cannot modify the technology back. So when we st when I start to talk about how we can change the tools that change us, uh, I need to define a we. What is the we that that I'm talking over here? How do we can change? So the we was about. Uh, making a bridge between communities, uh, mainly in the in the local hacker space, is called Hagbo, uh, but but uh, it was not with the let's say usual inhabitants of Hagbo. They were not the core members who are programmers, but a lot of of diverse people who was invited to the workshops. Uh, so those people were uh, librarians, uh, newbie programmers like myself at that time, uh, philosophers, journalists, uh, philology students, communication. 
uh, studies, students, uh, activists, artists, designers, like people who is not into programming. Um, and, uh, and the idea of exploring this question was about making prototypes. So we started to create some kind of events. It was like uh, 700 hours of workshops. And, uh, and uh, yeah, like since 2015, we do a lot of workshops. They were called Data Weeks and Data Rodas. In fact, uh, the idea of Roda was from Capoeira, but was inspired from, from there. So the idea was to, to, to have like this, uh, let's say, uh, like, I don't know, festive approach to, to coding. <laughs> uh, so the idea was to have like yeah, this this um, festive approach to coding. And it was like a joke on the coding dojos, the idea that you are like working with abstract projects and problems and with, you know, kata, some form. Our idea was to have meetings and to work with data and to write about that stuff and to approach to community problems by making prototypes in these uh, events. Um, and we make a small short course uh, of 19 hours, uh, what was intensive. We started that in 2021. Um, so we start to, to do prototypes on a lot of domains. So, for example, uh, yeah, you need to, to attend to one, to one data roda. It would be really nice to have you here. Maybe we are organizing now, like, let's say, uh, virtual data rodas because of the pandemic. Uh, but now that, that the, the COVID restrictions were are more relaxed, uh, we are also starting to do uh, events in the face-to-face -face events in the hacker space. But yeah, it would be really nice to have you over over here. In fact, the the methodology that we use to create these real-time documents in uh, in Marlon using Hashtag that we shared with you uh, in the in the uh, Cuban event was from the data rodas was a device order. Uh, so we started to do these uh, domains and prototypes. We start with uh, with uh, self-publishing and documentation. So uh, I create this software called Graphoscopio, and I use Graphoscopio to write the handbook, the uh, yeah, the handbook on the manual on Graphoscopio. So it works for making interactive documentation. The idea is that you can mix uh, you can mix uh, uh, prose, code data and visualizations in a single document and and that document is interactive and you can use that for data storytelling for data activism for reproducible research and publishing um, and this is how a notebook in graphoscopio looks like so the idea is that you have like this tree like document so this is a, like a tree of notes the notes can contain code like in small talk a programming language that i use to create the software or they can contain uh like uh, Marlon. Marlon is this, uh, I will just show you, I don't know, like over here, over here. Yeah. So for example, you can have like something like this, uh, like uh, uh, whatever. So just let me go back to my presentation. So the idea is that you can have like, like this is Marlon. Marlon is this, It's like really like uh, format, so you can write uh, and put marks. So the idea that you can write with this like really uh, easy um, format, and with this format you can start to to create I don't know subsections, uh, links, and you can put like for example. You can like write over here with this like really easy format and you can like see the the, the output in real time over here this is markdown and we use that in the workshops to document in real time uh with this performative publishing so the idea is that <clears throat> let me just go back to my presentation okay so the idea is that you can have like this um these notes and uh, some of those notes are markdown like the example that i showed you and some others are code uh, so, for example, I am, I can, here, here I am saying I want to put all this metadata in my in my document, and and Graphoscopy is going to traverse this uh, tree document, and it will produce this output. So this is the PDF of the Graphoscopy uh, um, manual done in Graphoscopy. So this this table of contents is this table of contents, 
and these options over here control the output of the PDF over here. So the templates and all that stuff. Um, yeah, we made also the Data Feminist book republishing. So Catherine Dignacio and Lorraine Clean, uh, they, they open uh, their book and they say that uh, they would like to have some feedback from different communities. Um, what, what they are talking about is the, the idea that you can use intersectional feminists to deconstruct power relations, relationships also in technology. So usually the, the intersectional feminist uh, is used in the, in the context of gender studies, but you could use the same framework, theoretical framework, to, to analyze a lot of stuff. Uh -huh. So I think that we are also exploring several, uh, let's say, binary relationships that are normalized and that think that there is a, uh, an imbalance of power that is also normalized, uh, like in gender studies. So user, developer, for example, there is something who develops the software and so, someone who uses, and, uh, and the developer has the power and the user needs to, I don't know, uh, put some uh, issue on the source code repository to see if the feature is going to be implemented at some, at some moment, or the data user and data consumer, uh, data producer, sorry, uh, or the or the executable and the, um, and the source code. So there is a lot of binaries in the technology and we are trying to deconstruct that. So what we tried to do with the data feminist book was to make a meta comment on the on the book itself. So we we, we take the the source code of the book because it was released by the MIT press and we migrate that from uh, these complex infrastructures to our pocket infrastructures. So if you see, for example, the book over here, um, you will see that um, there is a, um, just let me show you, sorry. So, yeah, if you see, for example, the book over here, yeah, this is the data feminist book. This is the chapter. And this is the place where this is published online by the MIT press. Uh, but the infrastructure is, has a lot of complexities that, of course, are not visible because infrastructure is invisible uh, only until it fails. So nobody knows how to restart their internet router until we don't have internet. But if you see, for example, over here behind the source code, there is a lot of, you cannot see, I mean, you cannot see the content over here. That's like a tendency in, a, oops, this is a tendency now in a, in a, uh, in a uh, in internet publishing, no, you see, I don't know, chapter one, chapter two, and stuff like this. But when you see the source code of the of the page, there is none. Uh, there is no place that, that says I don't know, chapter one, for example, over here. There is just a, a lot of opaque JavaScript, and that's it. And this is the book published in the in the MIT Press uh, infrastructure. And what we did was to to use the same infrastructure, but uh, sorry, or alternative infrastructure to republish that book. So this is the book published in our pocket infrastructures. So if you see over here, this is the same book, uh, but this is uh, republished using using our pocket infrastructures. So we do this, uh, let's say, performative republishing or publishing to showcase the the complexity behind a lot of infrastructures and how such complexity can be rethought. We can think that uh, stuff in another way. And if we rethought that complexity, uh, we can like uh, put more people into the loop, like make more people to participate. So this is the same book. So this is from MIT book. And this is from our republishing because it's just open content. So we can republish that. But the issue is that if you see the source code, the source code over here is, is super um, explicit and super simple. Uh, and that's what we're doing, like, like, okay, because you are like asking for a comment on your book, we're making a meta comment on the infrastructure that supports your book publishing. And in that, in that meta comment, we are saying that if we um, simplify the infrastructure, we amplify and diversify participation. That's like the idea. I don't know if there is some question or something that you want to, that someone's want to, to, to talk about or, I don't know what. Yeah. In any case, you can like ask uh, something in the chat or. So the idea is that we, we create these pocket infrastructures that are like self-contained, simple, extensibles and local fields. So we are not, we are not working 
with um, because I, I know there is this idea that you just start with a simple link and yeah but that simple link requires all the infrastructure of internet behind to start with that so we start with these local first infrastructures that can can use internet but don't assume that internet is always available as happens in many places in the global south so we use hedgedog the tool that i show you to to write in in a markdown we use pandoc it's another tool to export these these markdown files as pdfs uh, we use a tool that is called fossil is uh, for those who know is uh, similar to JIT of GitHub, but it's only three megabytes and everybody can. I mean, it's not, yeah, for me, JIT and GitHub are like this paradoxical decentralization of internet. Like everybody needs to collaborate in a single place that is GitHub. I don't understand why. Uh, to use a distributed system, everybody needs to be in the same place. It's like, it's not distributed. Or well, that, that was the idea, at least. And yeah, and we use Faro for this and Graphoscopy for this task documentation idea of scrapping the, the website, downloading the books, making some corrections, and creating the PDF. Uh, yeah, and Marty for the for the web page. And we start to do uh, similar experiments with the that data journalists. Um, uh, uh, yeah, somebody like somebody, yeah, Ricardo, go, go on. Ah, you don't you don't uh, raise your hand? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, sorry, what's Mark Deep? Cool. The last two you yeah, use. Yeah, yeah, cool, cool. Yeah. Uh, for me, I really like this uh like nitty gritty uh, uh, questions about like infrastructure because I think that yeah, we need to to ask ourselves about which infrastructure makes possible the yeah, the material world that we are living in. So um uh, Mardip is a super set of Marnum that can be used to publish in a really like fast uh, way so if you remember we start to talk about the use of we start to use these like minimal um, formats and minimal uh, infrastructures to do um, publishing uh, because there is this open book that is coming from the from the gig people and if you remember i don't remember the, the name of the guy but he was like like thinking in some like uh let's say publishing uh javascript powered publishing format for for because yeah alex yeah alex. alex yeah 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 but but and and we talk a, a little bit about this 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 uh, framework it's let's say ecosystem is not working uh but anyway the idea is that uh you have like like marnow and you can put this little bit of javascript and this make any marty page that is mostly marnon a web page so it's a small javascript library that allows you to pull marty that is a superset of marnon uh documents in the web directly just by putting uh, these uh, four lines of scripts in your publishing. So you can take any page that was done in uh, in Markdown at these lines, and you have automatically this page like as a, as a, as a published artifact on the online. So yeah, it's, it's really cool. And I think that if, if Alex is, is working JavaScript powered uh, tool for writing in a, in a really fast fashion, I think Done. Sorry, I lost my connectivity. Uh, I don't know. Uh, okay, I don't know if you. Well, where was the last part that I told you? But anyway, I want to rotate. I could understand. So the, the, I, the 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 next experiment. I will, I will in these other experiments in a like faster piece. But the idea is that that we use we made some this perform.
Oh. Hi again. Sorry, I am losing. I am losing my my connectivity. Okay. I am going to. I, I could. I could get about Mark Deep. We could understand, you know, and about Alex and the thing. So. Okay. I cool. Think it's okay. Are you seeing my screen now? It's working. I think that my connectivity yes. is okay. So we make the same the same republishing using the data journalist handbook. That is something that other people uh, publish online. But uh, for me, there is this issue with, with what I call the let's say the nominal freedoms. So here is this PDF for this HTML, and it's under an open content license, usually Creative Commons, and the factual freedoms. That that is here is the source code of the document. So usually it's like this is the document, it's an open license PDF, do whatever you can, uh, versus this is uh, the source code of the of the published work, like the book or, or, or the source code, and you can intervene the, 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 the publication. So what we did was to take uh, to take the, the data journalist handbook, Manuel Periodismo de Datos, and we scrapped the 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 site and we create this uh, graphoscopio notebook that has like these properties uh, of, of publishing and, and all the chapters and all that stuff and we created the exported pdf so we have the source code of the of the because because the the book is published online under an open content license we can scrap the content we can put that into a source code repository we can create a document that is more interactive, that has metadata, that has a lot of properties about the, the publishing process. And because of that, the publishing of the book becomes reproducible. It's something that, that you can like using these, uh, 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 let's say parameters, you can you can recreate the book in a particular way. So we have like uh, the complete publishing process described as a, as a node with metadata about how you can process the book to go from the source code to the PDF. So we like to construct the process and recreate the process in a reproducible way uh, instead of giving only the people the PDF or the, or the um, um, yeah, or the, just the, the final work. It's, it's the, the complete process behind. Uh, and we did something similar with the doc documentaton. So we start to publish our own book. It was yeah, because most of the time, yeah, this was like republishing other people's works. But we start to 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 document the way that we document. So we we create a collective book about how to create collective books, and we call it documentathon. That because because in our publishing process, publishing is a performative act. So it's not this solo endeavor where you are like I don't know by yourself in a mountain with coffee writing. It's a, a more festive uh, collective act where you, uh, you know, you, you just meet with friends and uh, start to write chapters and to mix them and to publish them in a like collective fashion. So, yeah, this is the 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 website, and we use a uh, technology behind. In fact, we use Lua, this uh, Brazilian computer language, to create filters to create all these uh, like admonitions and icons and all that stuff. We created that using uh, Lua. Um, so, um, yeah, the idea is that, and, and we start to work with also other stuff that is, for example, this idea of reproducible research, the idea is that we can bridge uh, code, data, process, and visualization to, to publish stuff that goes beyond the, the academical uh, PDF paper. Because when you have a PDF paper, you, you, know, you, you have a lot of, you don't have the source code of the claims that the paper is doing. You just have uh, the... You know, a, a table with a resume uh, with the, some uh, I don't know let's say um, yeah sample of the of the data or the data is is, is in a abbreviated form in a table and that's it you need to to just believe in the in the claims of the of the paper because you cannot reproduce the paper with uh, your own software so the idea is that we start to do um, more more uh, yeah more reproducible uh, publishing behind research. Uh, so we created, like, for example, this is a, a publication uh, that that uses a custom-made visualization about the the, uh, the information released by public agencies about health, uh, about medicines, 
Uh, so a friend of mine, she was like work, working in his in his uh, master thesis, and she need to to visualize, uh, yeah, uh, a lot of really set information uh, from from uh, medicines. Uh, and we take, took uh, inspiration from. I am going to show you like in class. We, we took inspiration from uh, from. Uh, uh, yeah. so we took inspiration from uh, the Guardian. The Guardian made uh, this uh, custom visualization, and uh, about like like gay rights in several states in, in the United States, and we take that uh, and made. Um, my, my internet is really slow, but anyway, uh, the idea is that um, yeah, this was the the original. Uh, visualization she took place from the guardian uh, we have like a lot of gray spots and and let's say like strong colors and and not uh, like washed colors that that uh, describes the the yeah how a right uh, for the gay population is implemented in legislation and we took this as an inspiration to create this that is related with other stuff but uh, this was made for by the guardian and they have like a complete uh, team working in this visualization. It was this was done by by she and by me. Uh, yeah. So we have like these tools that allow us to to create like really expressive, custom made uh, document uh, visualizations that are reproducible and that you can put in your visualization. This is the process of of how I made uh, this visualization and the final format it took. But the idea behind is this idea of of a tool that you can change while you are using the tool. This idea of a meta tool, a tool that that is uh, adaptable to the problem instead of the other way around, uh, that was part of the of the core idea of, of the of the thesis of the PhD thesis. Uh, and use it, uh, we use it also in uh, uh, yeah, in making uh, the Panama Papers reproducible. So the idea is that you can have like like uh, all these tools from if you make if you made a claim, you can you can put that claim in a single artifact that contains data. That contains the source code uh, and algorithms. That contains the documentation and the publishing platform. So instead of having just a web uh, site where you just do click here and there, what you have is the same tool that the people who create the publication uh, uh, use it to to create that publication. So you, we don't have this asymmetry between the consumer of the story of the data story and the create of the, and the creator of the, the data story. Uh, but the creator of the, the data story is publishing a complete uh, framework that has all the elements for the story to be uh, yeah, extended by the readers. Uh, yeah, and we are like working in several events on uh, this uh, idea of reproducible research. And uh, I'm going just to go like more quick over here. But yeah, the idea is that we can, we can um, let's say, uh, yeah, we, we can like like use this technology for what is called civic activism and digital citizenship. So the idea is that we can use coding and tech practices for activism and for rights defense and enhancement. Uh, so uh, there is uh, these two authors, Sisin and Rupert, and they have this book that is called Being Digital Citizen, Citizens. And, uh, and they start with the speech acts. Uh, I am not going to go into that into detail, but it's a uh, philosopher theory and and they say that we can also say stuff with actions without pronouncing any word we can say stuff and they they uh, use these uh, speech acts to say that we can have also digital acts and they call these acts uh, the callings the closures the openings and the claims uh, and um, the idea is that uh, in data activism uh, you can ask for data digest data, contribute data, model model data, or contest data. So what we are saying over here is that we, we can also say stuff with technologies and infrastructures. When we choose a technology, uh, we are saying, so, saying something by that uh, choosing. Um, so uh, we start to do some prototypes on visualization uh, for the discourse on Twitter. This is just an early prototype. We are so create. This is a project from a friend that is related with his. This is an open hardware sensor for the quality of air in Bogota. He he's Antonio, my friend, and we start to create uh, like that data visualizations for, uh, for the data story behind this uh, artifact. So the idea is that we made some workshops 
and we teach uh, some children how to ensemble these uh, these air quality sensors and the people were able to to uh, measure by themselves uh, the quality of air in Bogota and in fact this has a, a result in the in the let's say policy of air control in, in Bogota already because yeah in Bogota the local authorities they just decide to create their own scale for measuring air quality with the colors uh let's say uh yeah, the, the colors were not in the proper place. Like, like for example, in the international standard, what was a, a code red in, in Bogota was a code orange. What was orange in Bogota was yellow. What was yellow in Bogota was green. So the scale was like different uh, to, to produce this sense of calm because the colors were different. But when people start to have their own sensors, the, the authorities in Bogota change the the scale back to the international standard uh, and this is our last project so it's called candidatos and datos candidates in data what we did was to take um, the the discourse of the candidates in twitter for the colombian election and we start to create these uh, data portraits so the idea was um, to ask ourselves how much when about what and with whom do colombian presidential candidates talk on twitter uh, and this was like the the output. This was the this is the elected uh, the elected president, and this is the the elected vice president. She is the first black woman to have a vice presidential uh, yeah uh, yeah to be a, a, a vice president in Colombia. Uh, so we create this for all the candidates in Colombia, and with this um, with this. Um, um, Tag clouds where we were able to see, for example, what were what were the main uh, points of their discourse. Uh, we were able to see the frequency of tweets in time, uh, how how much they answer to other people. I don't know, maybe you are seeing some people who are, who is in power and no, yeah, that usually do, doesn't answer to anybody like they are in this monologue. Uh, yeah, go on, Ricardo. So the visualization, all those visualizations you are doing this new prototypes in Graphoscope, right? Yeah, we did we did that uh, with the let's say the next. Uh, so Graphoscope was done uh, while, while while I was doing my PhD, but after after Graphoscope was done, there was this uh, new. I will show you. There is this new um, framework that was not exist. Uh, this I will show you this framework. So. Yeah, there is this uh, new framework that was not existent when uh, I was uh, working with um, with Graphoscopio, uh, that is called uh, Glamorous Toolkit, and Glamorous Toolkit has an improved interface and has also a notebook alike interface, so you can write data stories. This this uh, uh, infrastructure was not there when I started my PhD, so Graphoscopio uh, exists since twenty fifteen. And this software exists since 2021. So we're migrating our practices to this new framework because it's most uh, it is is it is more friendly. Uh, so we are using uh, this framework now, but we are using the same learnings that we we learned with this uh, graphoscopy tool in these last uh, seven years. Um, so yeah, we, 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 we sorry what and glad. And Glamorous can also export as PDFs and, and EPUBs and this kind of thing? Uh, no. And precisely that is where we are like using these, uh, let's say, uh, previous uh, learnings. So we are implementing all that features in uh, in Lepiter and in Glamorous Toolkit. So the, the tool for for writing data, data stories is called Lepiter. I will show you. Uh, this is... So... Um, the issue is that they don't have, I think that at least in the global south, we have like this, let's not say rush, but we have like, we have few resources. So we need to be clever uh, about how we use our resources. So for example, these visualizations are done using LaTeX and a set of tools that are not um, connected with uh, Lepiter or, or this, this tool that is for data stories. And they are not connected with uh, Glamorous Toolkit. So we are extending now Glamorous Toolkit with the same features that we had in Graphoscopio previously. There are some features that are like not so easy to be great, but we are going to do it in the future. 
Uh, but also that depends on time, on funding, a lot of stuff. But, but the idea is that that uh, yeah, we're like like adding these features to to create uh, this document. So, for example, when you publish something in, uh, we we create uh, we use Martip to create. I will show you. So um, we use Martip to create like an extended format to publish data stories. I will show you over here. So for example, this is a data story that was uh, published in uh, in Lepiter, this tool for data data narratives, about the migration of a, of a site from uh, from a, let's say a static uh, site generator it was called Ugo to a dynamic wiki that is called Tidly Wiki. So this is the code behind and the images and all that. So this this is this, a data story behind behind migrating a site from a static site generator to a dynamic wiki and as you can see there is a lot of uh yeah the, the classical uh intertwine of code and data and algorithms and visualizations that that compose uh any data story and i can show you the same data story in my glamorous toolkit I will just glamorous is not really like responsive so that's uh, yeah, so this is Glamour's Toolkit. I will show you the same story. Okay, here's. So this is the same data story that I showed you as a published artifact in uh, in uh, Firefox, in the web. This is the same data story. Uh, but here is an interactive story. So over here, I can do calculations. I can, I can like... So I can like, I don't know, like, uh, I am not going to do it because I don't want to froze my machine or take a lot of time, but I can like execute all this code to do the stuff that is described in the data story. And this for this is inside Glamorous. So I cannot publish from Glamorous to the web, but we uh, use the learnings that we had in Graphoscopio and we created a way to publish from Lepiter to the web. That is the one that I am showing you over here. And it's using Martip, the, the extended Martip format. So it's, it's a really, really easy to, to publish uh, technology and easy to read and easy to, to version it, to put in a source code version system. Um, and has this metadata, this div class, whatever, with this, all that stuff. And that metadata allows us to take this document and import that document back into Lepiter. So this is not Graphoscopio now, this is Lepiter, but we are using uh, the, the learning that we uh, took uh, in Graphoscopio in this new platform and to, to keep this cleverness, uh, let's say, to, to have these minimal approaches uh, to, to publishing, for example, or these connective approaches to publishing, to use, I don't know, Pandoc with LaTeX, with uh, Graphoscopio, with Lepiter. That's like the idea. Uh, so yeah, this is like the, um, the um, the final stuff that we that I want to 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 show you that was these uh, data stories. Something that is interesting is that we are using uh, not in this idea of cleverness. We are using um, um, we are we are not using. Okay, uh, go, go on, uh, Father. Um, no, I was just wondering if you have a place where you can, where you have the links for these tools. I mean, I already wrote some, but like, do you have a document? Maybe more. If I if I have what sorry, a document that has the the links the resources to these tools that you've been using in your storytelling. Ah uh, um, yeah, uh, I don't okay. have it, but I I could share. Uh, I could share that uh, in the chat. Like, uh, do you mean like putting all these uh, the, the yes. tabs that I am opening? In? Okay, I will do. I will do it like like. I mean, it would be nice. Just I was wondering. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So this is the one that is like uh, behind this data story. This is the one of Lepiter. This is like uh, you know this handbook. Uh, this is the one of the head toolkit. Let me just put on the head toolkit. That is the the new toolkit that we are using because yeah, it exists now and with Graphoscopio it was not. Uh, and this is the one of Graphoscopio in English. Uh, so. And uh, over here, we have the Graphoscopio manual. Yeah, Graphoscopio is mostly outdated. And one of the st stuff that we did uh, for, for our, our data visualization 
uh, in this idea of using cleverness because we have like low resources in the global south. I think that something that happens with the global south is that it's a reservoir, like a place where you have like a lot of alternatives because we don't have like this. Uh, of course, we we struggle with that also, but we don't have like this. Uh, uh, the 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 capitalism is not a strong vector over here. Not everybody wants to do the next big thing, shiny stuff that is uh, related with machine training. Uh, I call it machine training. It's not machine learning for me. Or with I don't know big data or what all that all that stuff. Um, and that gives us uh, like the possibility of explore other stuff. As I have uh, told in the in the mailing list, I think that infrastructures uh, organize and accumulate uh, actions and they embed context. So by by deploying alternative stacks, infrastructural stacks, we are exploring alternative futures. And I think that that's what we're doing over here. So for example, for, um, for our, uh, uh, we're taking the, infor the information of, uh, for example, this is the. Um, this is Niter. Niter is an open source front end for Twitter. So we don't use the API of, of Twitter. We use Niter, and Niter allow us to scrap um, data, the same data that, that Twitter has, without subscribing the the Twitter API terms. So it's limited in several senses, but it allows to us uh, to to take data in a more direct way instead of waiting. I, I was working with these technologies for a, yeah, for, for an international intergovernment inter inter for the United Nations. Anyway, the, the idea is that uh, we were like like asking for data from Twitter and was like a really bureaucratic process. So do you remember this uh, scene for, from the Simpsons? Like this, uh, yeah, it's like, yeah. Do you remember this uh, scene from The Simpsons where when Homero needs to go to ask for his old job again? Like it's like, yeah, it's like when you when you go, there is these two doors: the doors of the applicant and the door of the supplicants, and you feel that all the time with Twitter. It's like you are supplying for supplic supplica. You are, you, yeah, you are a supplicant for the data. It's like even if you are working for a big, known international. Uh, entity it's really difficult uh, in this bureaucracy to get data so we want something that was like easier to people with uh, for the people to start with so we use uh, a meter that is this open source for for Twitter and you can go so for example if I see the same this is the vice president the Colombian vice president elected so if I see uh, this place from uh, from Twitter I'm going to put the same URL but we did Twitter instead of meter uh, it's again all this opacity of the web. Like the web today is this this really opaque place where everything is a call to JavaScript and you not, don't know what is the data behind the, the, the page that the, your browser is showing you. So if we see the same the same uh, page from Twitter and from Meter, uh, yeah. So this is Twitter. This is Meter. Meter is this uh, open source from for Twitter. And if you see the source code of the page, it's again opaque JavaScript. That's it. If you see the same page from Meter, is uh, explicit HTML. So we are using like these alternative approaches because we need to be like clever in the way that we spend resources because we don't have a lot uh, to create these data stories. Our idea is now to to keep creating these data stories for the elected uh, officials in the in the Colombian government and for other people to to make sense of all this noise that is uh, all the time in, in social networks and to keep using these uh, technologies for for. Uh, um, yeah, for data activism and for for learning how to modify the tools that modify us in these in these uh, endeavors. Um, so we, we we talk about this idea of data haikus. So in this world of big data, artificial uh, air quotes intelligence, um, 
and machine training, I think that we need to, to look for other places. And um, so the idea of data haikus is, is that if we want to, to find the needle in the haystack, we need to build a magnet instead of the uh, friction machine. So the approach of, of today for data, for making sense of data, is take all the data, uh, do stuff with hyper complex, hyper giant stuff, uh, and, and see what happens. In our case, it's not like that. It's, okay, we start with the problem. We try to use infrastructures that are inclusive. Because when you talk about big data, you're talking implicitly about the people who is able to, to store and process such a quantity of data. So you're excluding people from the beginning. Uh, so the idea is that we don't want that. We want to, to, to give people agency by creating these tools that allows them to solve uh, grassroots problems from making sense of political discourse on social media to create their own publishing uh, um, um, publications um, or republishes the stuff that is already online but is not accessible in, as, as they would like to uh, or to make a reproducible research, research or to publish their own websites <laughs> that is the, the stuff that we are working on uh, so we're looking for uh, for uh, what is like called numeracy so there is some people that, that talks about like the the literacy in the in the new age means uh, literacy, uh, numeracy, that is make sense of numbers, and graphicacy makes sense of plots. So we're like like trying to get this uh, numeracy uh, because we want to make sense that is numbers plus visuals plus context, and we start with the problem. Uh, we, we we don't start with uh, the hello world example. Ah, yeah, this was the example that I was showing you, the idea of data stories, creating more data stories. Yeah. Uh, and I think that, for example, we have like uh, pretty, I don't know, clever stuff because, for example, the, the solution that everybody uses for this kind of uh, work is uh, Jupyter Notebook. But, for example, our format is really is, uh, small. It allows us to import and export uh, uh, the, the publications. And is human and deep friendly. You can you can put that into a source code repository and to see the changes. So this is an example of, of how we can like by taking this alternative approach of, of data stories with these other technologies, with these uh, uh, data haikus, this idea of of focusing off on a small data and trying to make sense of that. I think that that that's like a, an approach that I think that is like it, it works better for the people over here. Yeah, go on, Fadi. Okay, bye, Sandra. Okay, bye. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Afre. It was super interesting to see. Thank you. Thank Have you. Have a thanks. wonderful day ahead of you. Okay, the same. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't know if there is some some other question or something to to finish. I think that yeah. I will. I will finish the recording. Uh-huh. Uh.